Okay, here's my top five Souls-like games that aren't made by FromSoft. This isn't a review of the games. These are just the top five games I had the most fun with that happen to be Souls-like inspired games, Souls-inspired games. There's still a lot more I have to play. Um, let me know your favorite Souls-like down in the comments. Start a conversation if you want, that's fine. And here we go. Aster Asteragos, Curse of the Stars. I believe that's what it's called. This was one that was had a demo, and then I tried the demo, and then I kind of kind of liked the the combat. It was pretty smooth for a studio I've never heard of. Kind of off the radar a little bit, even though I think it was available on Xbox and PS5, if I'm not mistaken. But if you catch this one on a sale, it's got it's got decent combat. It's it's got a lot of enemy types, weapons you can pick. Uh, the web weapon system was kind of unique in a way. It had um, I just remember having a lot of fun with this one. It was about, I don't know, I want to say it was about 30 hours. It took me about 30 hours. But the graphics are okay. It's very, I mean, the backgrounds are kind of PS3-ish, early PS4. And, and, the, and the levels are a bit sparse. Um, it doesn't, they don't feel full, that's for sure. But I think it's well worth your time on sale if you like Souls like games. And the story is so so. It's not, you're not playing it necessarily for the story. You're just playing it for the gameplay. So yeah, give, give Asteragos a try if it's on sale. Or try the demo. It has a demo on Steam. I don't know if it has a demo on the console, so. <laughs> Mortal Shell. This one surprised me the most out of every, everything on this list. I saw, uh, I think it was Penguin Zero's channel. He was doing like a playthrough of it and I saw how the mechanics, you know, how, how, how it played and it seemed interesting to me. So I just bought it. It was 15 bucks, I think, 20, 20 15 or 20 bucks on sale. So I picked it up and was actually pleasantly surprised of how smooth the combat was and how interesting the mechanic of, you know, what you do is you inhabit a body of a fallen warrior from the past and that's, you take it on his skill set. And there are ways to upgrade, you know, your weapons and the uh, abilities of each shell that you inhabit. And it's kind of cool. It seems like the level designs aren't the best. You kind of feel like you're in a fishbowl, if that makes any sense. It doesn't feel very, like, I don't know, expansive. You don't, there's something weird about the level design that really always kind of felt a little off. And a lot of it's pretty empty. In the bigger zones, it feels very empty. Um, but the beginning area, the forest area is kind of cool. And uh, the, the, the enemy types are varied enough where it'll keep you on your toes. And it takes about, this one takes only about six, seven hours to beat. It's really a short game. Dealt well worth it though, if it's on sale. So give Mortal Shell a chance. It's not bad. Oh, this brings us to number three, Remnant from the Ashes. One and two. I'm going to put one and two both in here because I had fun with both. The first one I spent about 60 hours in. It's a Souls-like gunplay, you know, shooter game, as you can see from the trailer here. Um, this is from the Remnant 2. Well, like a lot of these are, they're very zone heavy. You just teleport to a zone, you, you fight a thing, and then you go back, upgrade your weapons. There's a lot of weapons in the first one. There's even more in the second one. So if I would say if there's a starting point, I'd say the second one is the most polished version of Remnant. You could start off on Remnant 2, and it's perfectly fine. It's a lot harder, though. It is harder than Remnant 1 in my eyes. But definitely smooth gunplay for third person. You get lots of cool uh, attachments you can put on your gun for abilities. So, you know, and the bosses are fun. The bosses are kind of fun. Challenging, but fun. <laughs> so give it a shot if it's on sale. I, I would never say pay full price, full price for any of these games. If you like third person shooters and you want to do it in a Souls-like setting-ish, then check out Remnant 1 and 2. Now this brings me to number two, which is Neo. The first one. I haven't played the second one at all. Now this game was tough this was this was a tough game for me this was the hardest one on the list that i have um i would say neo and bloodborne were the two hardest games i've ever played i still have to play sekiro so don't don't kill me on that one but this was it's definitely if you want an, a challenge and you like uh the samurai you know east asian aesthetic then i say neo is great is a great uh, addition to the souls like category so yeah, uh, story is, I don't remember at this point. It's been seven, eight years since I played this game. I don't really remember. I remember it being okay. I remember the story being okay, but it's really the gameplay and just taking on the challenges of the bosses and stuff. It's a, 
a very challenging game, but there's something here for you if you really like this genre. If you haven't, if you're just dabbling in, maybe stay away from this one at first. <laughs> this might not be the one for you to jump into. I would say don't start with Neo if, if you're not uh, familiar with Souls-like games. That's all I'm saying. It's, 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 for me, it was really challenging, so. But it's got it's got a nice atmosphere. It's got a nice atmosphere and the graphics still hold up pretty well today. It's definitely worth a, worth a look. Code Vein. I know people are gonna hate me for this one, but I had a lot of fun playing this game. Now the levels themselves are kind of bland, I would say, the levels are bland. The enemies are okay. There's not as many as you would probably want, like variety of them but there's enough to get by. The graphics are good, it's anime souls, man. And you get a great character creator. It's actually one of the better character creators. Well, the base game itself from beginning to end was engaging and fun. The story was, ah, it's whatever. It's not anything that's gonna blow you apart. There's one really annoying factor though, is to unlock different abilities and skills. You gotta go through some dream sequence and eh, the first five times is fine. But after about 10, 15 times of doing that, it gets really annoying, so. <laughs> prepare to be annoyed but it's definitely the gameplay in and of itself when you're out there in the world is fun it's challenging it's probably the easiest one on this list besides asteragos i would say asteragos and this game are the two easiest ones that i've played but it's it's got a decent runtime it took me about 35 i think 35 hours to beat or originally 35 or 40. there's one there's one level in particular that you're going to hate is the cathedral and you're going to get lost i mean i know i did so be prepared to be lost in that very bland cathedral white space it's just it's just white everywhere it'll send you into a violent frenzy probably you know it's got a great character creator if you like the anime style it's got a lot of faults but there's there's enough charm here to keep possibly keep you going i would say this is probably last on the list out of all these but for fun factor it was my number one so that's why it's here well, that's it that's that's my list of the top five so far as of right now there there are some there are some honorable mentions too like hollow knight was a really good one but i did i never finished that game it's really hard <laughs> that game is hard as fuck and i just kind of lost interest it, it, it's a good game don't get me wrong it's a good game but i, I ended up doing other things uh, i think i was playing destiny 2 at the time and then there's life of lies of p which came out recently uh the steel one steel rising which I heard was a good one. If you really want to see some really underground souls like uh, games that you could get into, Iron Pineapple is a great channel to follow. He's a great channel to follow if you want a serious cover. This is just, this is just scratch. This video is just scratching the fucking surface of games that I was able to start and finish. It's basically telling you that these are at least okay games. I had fun with these are the ones I had the most fun with. Now I'm not saying they're the best games, definitely not. But they are the ones that I had the most fun playing. Oh, we meet again.